All right, to start, we have our team heart, Nanaha, played by Lumichan. Nanaha is... A way of the shadow monk who used to be a sun soul. Human, too. <laughs> Next, we have Saya, played by myself. Saya is a water ganassi warlock, uh, and she obtained the ability to fly recently. Next, we have Raz, played by Mazegus. Raz is... A Shadar Kai fighter barbarian who is eager to get his combat on. Next, we have Pocket, played by Dezene. Pocket is. A Tabaxi Phantom who can't wait to get his stat long distance stab on. Next, we have Team Mom Verity, played by the one and only Mr. Pounce. Verity is. Definitely not playing with her character card at the moment, but also a Divine Soul Sorcerer. Next, we have soon to be the only holy man left in Barovia and Lumberjack Jesus, Axel Sillison, played by Lennon Marks. Axel is. A uh, human devotion paladin slash light cleric who is ready to try to save the city and maybe fight some things. And last, but most definitely not least, our GM extraordinaire Fluffy Snowfall here to take us through tw the session 21 of Curse of Strahd. Uh, I guess extraordinaire is a word. It is. <laughs> uh, first off, hi everyone. Welcome to session 21 in the year 2021. Um, just want to stand on my soapbox for a few seconds and say uh, thank you everybody for the support last year. And I'm looking forward to um, having fun with you all this year. So thanks for hanging around. We adore you, don't worry. Last time, the group had wrapped up their involvement in Kresk for the time being and made their way back to Valakai, which seems to be having its own problems. There seems to be disarray from Vi's to power against the Burgomaster. Corpses have been rising from Lake Zarovich, and children have gone missing. The group, wanting to get back into the, the village's good graces, uh, agreed to help uh, defend the village from the encroachment from the lake. And... As they get beyond the gate, seeing the swarming creatures, I would say, everybody, please roll initiative. Uh, can I have my shadow out beforehand, since we knew this was coming? I guess you can have little a shadow as a treat. Um, Actually, I was about to say, before we get into the thick of things, can I do something real quick? Sure. Um, I would like to roll everyone to roll initiative, but we any prep work you can do or hand, let me know. Banana is ready for the weird myth when he wants to do real quick. So before we even leave the uh, tavern, uh, Nanaha is feeling a little anxious. She runs up, quick grabs Saya's hand in both of hers. Good luck. Remember to poof away if you need to. Tries to go and fist bump Axel. Get him, holy man. Uh, squeezes and hugs Pocket off his feet. Only li uh, live people get to read Otto's manuscript. Uh, quick runs up, hugs Verity before she can... Uh, uh, what is it called? Fight back, I guess you could say. Because she saw Pocket get away with it. You've got this. And then runs up, hugs Roz, whispers in his ears... Thanks for the healer's kit, and then poofs off into a shadow to get away before anybody can react. So I was just gonna look at her hands. I mean, I have a self- I have self-preservation, unlike some people. 
That was, uh, that was some speed dating party banter. I mean, did she take Inspiring Leader or something <laughs> last level and we don't know it or what? <laughs> no, she's just feeling anxious. Are we gonna die? Fluffy said Red Clip, okay? Uh, the only prep work, if any, uh, that I wanted to do was get any um, arrows from the the the, the barricade or wherever. Uh, any additional arrows, or if they're using any particular special ammo, that as well. And you can tell me however much of whatever. You can get regular arrows just fine. I'll take 20. Help! I was practicing drawing lightning bolts, and now I can't make the lines go away. <laughs> uh, Sai would wait until we actually got to the wall, but I would want to be in the air before. Um, sure. Lennon, could you shake the treat box, please? Oh, yeah, in one second. Damn it, it's still on. All right, I'm going to stop playing with the tail of my turn. I'm sorry, Fluffy. Thank you for getting rid of it. Oh, no. Boxes. It's embarrassing that I don't know how to use our system. It's her one weakness. Dang it, po uh, Pocket, you beat me to it. <laughs> is 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 she a cat? Is one of the boxes are her weakness? No, Fluffy's go. a dog. Pocket has been neutralized. <laughs> I will sit. He just looks really comfortable. Oh yeah, chat, how do you like the outline? Alright. Kind of annoying we can't delete our own drawings. Ten. Oh, I oh, just God. deleted pocket. Wow. <laughs> I've oh, there it is. <laughs> it's a good run, guys. Your your trap card worked. How do we delete our own drawings, though, for the uninformed? You should be able to click and drag and select uh, anything you drew, you drew click, and yeah, it'll okay. highlight it. I was I had the square tool still open, and it was like, ha -ha, look at me! <laughs> I'm making more boxes! You all get to the other side of the wall, get all of your necessary preparations, and you see... Just the the surface of the lake splashing back and forth as something seems to be stirring from within it. You see various bloated, green-skinned bodies sloughing out of the water, making their way up towards the gate. You are able to take out many of them from long distance using the bottleneck of the gate, but it seems as if that if any progress is to be made, you'll have to go down to the shoreline. You make your way down there. And this is where we will start combat officially. All right. Top of the order.
All right. You see some very rotten looking bluish green skinned humanoid corpses and they just take off in a mad sprint towards the group. That will be their turn due to distance. They have to spend their action dashing. Na 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 na. Uh, sorry, did my turn get overridden by Roz in the initiative tracker? I think you uh, got deleted, so your yeah. turn went away. <laughs> that's right. Uh, thanks, please. Oh, that's fine. I mean, there's a, there's a ways to go. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, na na ha. All right. Uh, I'm just gonna try to mm, mm, so many. Uh, okay, we're gonna punch you, punch you, punch you. The one in front of me. Okay. Well, that second one's missing. <laughs> I know one hit. <laughs> the you get the adrenaline flowing through you. You swing one punch, hitting aside the thing's face. A sort of like tarish icker splattering on your fist. The anxiety getting the better of you. You swing again, miss. Take a deep breath for calm and basically kind of just lift your knee and knee it right square in the midsection. The first and the third attacks hit. Okay. Anything else you'd like to do? Just because there's so many around me, can I use a key point to put up patient defense? Uh, that would take a bonus action, and you used your bonus action for a third punch. It's been a while, thank you. <laughs> I am You're welcome. stuck as is, then. Apparently, it is not my turn. <laughs> not yet, anyway. Do do do. You see a couple more bodies begin to emerge from the surface of the water, shambling towards the shoreline. Just a a guttural groaning. Uh, they shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. They don't seem to quite make it to the group. Saya, your go. Alright, so first question How high up were the town's walls? Because that's where, like, Saya would be at that level in the air, and I'm just trying to position myself in my head. 15 feet. Okay, so she's 15 feet in the air. We're going to aim an Eldritch Blast at the one next to Pocket, because it is behind our lines, and that is not acceptable. Okay. Okay, you first strike hits. And then if it is not down, the second blast will also be sended that, or sent that way. Yeah, it is not down. Okay, that hits. Uh, and the second one will hit with the extra cold damage as well, which will be an extra three damage of cold. Um, you launch a greenish blast of energy out of your lantern at it. It splashes against the corpse's head, causing its neck to kind of lull around as it gurgles forward. You take that momentary uh, second where it's caught off balance and release another blast. 
taking its legs out from under it, it hits face first into the sandy ground, unmoving. <laughs> Alright, and then I'm gonna pop another five feet up in the air. We're, we're just gonna be a little bit safer. <laughs> okay. And that'll be her turn. All right. <laughs> what type of ice cream, Val? You see more bodies emerging up from the lake. Sloshing through. They make their way with a wet squelching sound as their bodies head through the waters. There's this groaning as they shuffle forward. Hang on, Axel. I, I tapped yeah. out to close the message. Did like eight more just appear? <laughs> yep. Oh, sweet Jesus. <laughs> um, how far are we from the um, you had to go down to the beach front, so you're about, I'd say, maybe about a hundred feet away. Okay. Other than the, the like the grumbling and moaning of zombies and stuff, is it a fairly quiet night? Uh, yeah, for the most part. I mean, there's obviously the sound of battle. There are periodic arrows launching to other sides of the beach. Hitting other zombies that are trying to break through. Okay. So Axel is going to start stepping forward. He's going to yell out, mostly for the group in here, but he hopes that the guards and the tower can hear him as well, or the guards at the town wall can hear him as well. We hold this beach. They do not advance. And Axel's going to step up here and attack the, the one that shambled into the clearing. Okay. So oh, I'm in uh, Spear and Shield setup, by the way. Okay. Uh, Good to know. Oh, Val. I'm so Okay, that's a hit. <laughs> and your, like, food making abilities. Alright, uh, second spear attack. Okay, that's also a hit. I'm seeing a trend here. <laughs> and then uh, hit him with the butt end. Okay. I mean, here's where the damage is. Go ahead. At least I'm consistent. Okay. You are very consistent. <laughs> All right, that's my turn. Uh, testing its metal, you take a, a quick stab, followed by a second up, and kind of one-handed swing the back end of the spear across the zombie's face. There's a wet squelch as it jaw as its jaw gets dislocated and falls to your feet with kind of a squish as it hits the muddy sand. It just kind of like looks at you lifelessly. Roz and Pocket, you are both up. Take the lead, Roz. All right. Um, assuming I am not yet raging, uh, I would like to rage. Um, and then I will use both my regular attack and one of my incarnate actions to uh, do two attacks from my shadow. Okay. Uh, the first one will go after the one that Nanaha had wounded. Okay. Right? Okay, that's a hit. Morning, Zan. Okay. Um, so that's one from your... That one's from your shadow, or...? Uh, I can make all of my attacks from my shadow. Um, four times per uh, long rest, I can do a secondary attack just oh, from okay. my shadow. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. 
you make a strike against the creature or against the the corpse in front of you. The blood spears echo, thrusting through it. It lands face first into the ground, sputtering. Uh, just for balance purposes, I'm going to say you only get the hit points if you if your primary person, like you personally, hits the enemy and not your shadow. Because that could get kind of cheesy, farming temp <laughs> HP from the other side of the battle. Oh, all right, fine. <laughs> uh, and the second one will go after uh, the uh, incarnate attack will go after the one closest to pocket. Okay, uh, one moment. We just got a doorbell. Okay. I thought I heard that. Nice. Nice bell. What you draw in there, Days? Plans. You sound tired. Are you okay? Okay, buddy? thank you. I'm back. Uh, feel free to make your second attack, Roz. I missed. I'm not supposed you do. to miss. Your, your shadow, <laughs> your echo shadow strikes out at this, but the corpse seems to not take any effect as this like the ghost the ghostly spectral spear goes right through it and that's his uh, he'll do a moving he will move himself up to that spot okay sounds good pocket uh, I'm gonna move over. Oops, to the left a bit here, and whip out the short bow and hit the zombie that Axel was hitting. Okay. That's a hit. And the pattern continues. You attacked the one that was in front of me. Oh, yeah, there we go. And then I will uh we also the grave the zombie that is to the right of Ra's ghost. Alright. And that's the end of my turn. Okay, so the one next to Ra's. The um, like kind of the the ghostly scream from the spirits that manifest themselves. So this time you actually notice as you launch the arrow, there seems to be a few like ghostly shapes that are launching arrows as well from your position, kind of floating around you. Everybody sees that at this point. Your arrow connects with the zombie in front of Axel, and the arrow goes right through its head, and you see its body slump over. But then a split second later, it, as it's like about to fall over, it re-corrects itself and stands up fully. The one I did 19 damage to in front of Axel? Yes. Okay. And the, the one that took the necrotic damage next to Rosgo's? It took the damage. Got it. That's my turn.
Hello, yes, push to talk. Yes, very good. Very good. Uh, we'll just... Oh, they they appeared. Yep. A few more bodies rise up from the lake. And begin shuffling towards... The group. Their, their bodies are very, like... Water bloated and swollen as they shuffle towards the co the uh, shoreline. Yes. Even more so than the other zombies emerging from the lake. Grouped together. Big That's shatters. That's just gross. Big shatters. <laughs> now Verity go. Well, see, what we have here is called the target-rich environment. My goodness. Uh, wow. Okay, well, I guess first thing on the list to do is some crowd control, so, uh, okay. Alright, I need to draw a cube. Draw a shape. Well, that's happening. Um, how tall is the rock that we're kind of formed up against? Uh, the rock is about 20 feet up, so Saya could land on it if she just went laterally. Is that a 20-foot cube? No. Is it a 20... Well, actually, no. It is. Four by four. Yeah, okay. Yes, 20-foot cube centered on the point that you can see, right? Yes. Okay, then Verity will, like, charge up some of that creepy darkness into her hand and kind of smash it into the ground. And for a second, nothing happens, but then... Explosion! Erupting Earth on that square... Okay. Ah, thank you. Semi-blessed dice gods? It was almost. I was it was on that third ten. I was like, come on, baby. Almost. All right. You reach down, and there's this blackish kind of tint that takes over the sand near that rock and there are these like just pillars of sand and broken earth and trees something Nanaha and Raz and Axel you notice being a little closer there seems to be like almost humanoid faces in these pillars of earth as they're churning Kind of like spirits screaming in pain as the earth is being torn apart. Oh, uh, whoa, okay. All right, um, all but one fail. They're saves, so. Okay. And the uh, square once, there is now difficult terrain, so... Right, yeah, once the eruptions of sand and debris stop, three of the bodies just slump over, completely, like, bludgeoned into a slightly rotten paste from the force of Verity's spell. The last one, just kind of looking with dead eyes, kind of un... Unaware, but focused at the same time. All right. The two left of that type. Okay. The remaining two of the more intact humanoid corpses make their way down towards 
pocket. Wouldn't and that, the, the one you move wouldn't that provoke from Raz and Nanaha? It if Raz's shadow can provoke. It can. Okay. I don't this is the first mm -hmm. time I've seen this thing in action, so Fair enough. Yes. It basically look it functions exactly like a one hit point version of my character. But isn't Raz's threaten range ten feet because of the spear? So it wouldn't have left. So five foot it's not a Oh, it's okay. not a long spear. Uh, I just assumed spear, so. Yeah, Roz can make an attack of opportunity on it. The one that was attempting to go for pocket has a ghastly spear thrust through its head, and with a gurgle and kind of eruption of like a blackish bile, it falls face first into the sand. The remaining one is going to attempt to attack Nanaha, though. Okay. Um, Nanaha, does a 18 hit you? Mine is 17. Ah, yes ah. it does. Alright, you take 10 points of slashing damage as it slashes its uh, claw-like hands at you. And I need you to make me a con save, please. Might grab her. She might be alright though. As it's like disgusting bony claws scra uh, scrape through your skin, you feel your body just locking up slightly. You shudder, but the, fe the feeling of like strange numbness goes away. And it is your go. Alright, uh, so. Two questions. One, am I in a shadow right now? It's it's nighttime, so I would say yes, by because it's nighttime. Okay. Um, does shadow step cause uh, an attack of opportunity if I pop away? No. All right. I am going to pop out of there then. Okay. To right here. So that's my... Yes. All right. And so, so that was. You were saying. Oh, go ahead. You first. No, you first. Jinx. Ah! And... I was going to say. Everyone, this you see Nanaha just vanish in a puff of like sh blackish smoke, and then reappear on the other side of the shore. Okay. The and... normal guy. And then I have advantage on my first attack before the end of the turn, so I am gonna Correct. smack that one first. Uh, both Roz turn to look at Pocket and answer in the same, yes, we've been practicing. <laughs> same number! Yeah, both, both numbers would hit. And I still get a second offhand attack, right? That is correct. I guess my fist just slid off. <laughs> yeah, the second one doesn't go. The undead creature just kind of, like, takes it without really flinching. Your first strike, though, with the quarterstaff, you hear the sickening crunch as its right arm is completely severed from its body. And hits the ground with a thud, kind of this blackish goo oozing out of it. Wait, did its hand just become a token? I saw that. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to stay We're... in Barovia anymore. 
does the Gulfius staff count as a monk weapon? Would she get both of her martial uh, two attacks? She would. Oh, it's the, the same attack. modifier, though. So it doesn't matter ah. too much. Now it's the regular zombies, Zombo Boys' turn. I'll... Yeah, there's just the one. Okay. Um, it is going to attempt to retaliate, retaliate against Axel. And kind of just like groans and throws, its, throws himself against the very heavily armored man. Are you fucking shitting me? I rolled a net 20, which was like the only thing that could have hit Axel. That sounds about right. I mean, they, they probably should be able to hit us at least once in this fight. I think they're going to do that several times. Okay, they Axel, that is uh, four points of bludgeoning damage. Either crit on a 1d2 or that was an awful roll. Oh, sorry, I forgot to double. That would be. Um, oh, there is a plus one. That'd be nine damage. Five more? So, a total of nine. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, that puts. Okay, Saya. Okay, they sadly died in a large chunk, so they didn't get closer to each other. Um, so we're gonna charge the first Eldritch Blast at the guy next to Shadow Raz. Okay. Yeah, that's a hit. If it's still up, the second blast will also go. Yeah, you blast, you like reach your hand out with your lantern and shoot a blast of eldritch energy at it. And there's a huge just explosion of partially rotten viscera that goes right through Raz's shadow echo. Ew. It still stands though. Well, that one's missing. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, that last one just splashes against it harmlessly. Look, I rolled over a 10 for initiative, and I hit three of my four attacks so far. This is so much better than normal <laughs> than Sia normally <laughs> does, so we're all good. You're ahead of the curve. <laughs> and you didn't have to, like, miss you step away on the first turn. <laughs> yes, because I am in the sky, and none of these can hit me, as far as I can tell right now. Yeah, wait till they still projectile vomiting in your direction. If they can vomit 15 feet straight up, they deserve it. I'm 20 feet in the air right now, but yes. Oh, um, when this one approaches me, I'm going to do my attack of opportunity against it. Polar Mastery! <laughs> and... Sorry, what was that, Fluffy? Go ahead and roll your attack of opportunity. Okay. That is a hit. Um, I am going to put a level one smite onto this. Okay. Does this get the extra damage die? Uh, yes, they are undead. Okay. So six piercing and 10 radiant.
you strike out at it and your spear goes right through the thing's neck. And you see this like sickening squelch as its head rolls off and hits the ground. The body is still standing, however. This will have to be a pitch. I'm way too into this music right now. Is that the head that got cut off? Yes. Okay. So assembly required. There's a reason I'm doing this. Are we gonna do we have to fight zombie Voltron at the end? What was that? We have to fight zombie Voltron at the end. Maybe. Suddenly it's a Sentai series. And I'll form the head, or... Uh, uh. Nanaha, the arm of the zombie that you bludgeoned previously, the arm kind of sh pulls itself against the ground, shuffling. And it, like, limply kind of stands up at the elbow before trying to slash at your thigh. Okay, that is a 20 to hit. Yeah, that definitely hits. Uh, that is... 7 points of slashing damage. Yeah. The zombie itself is going to take a shuffling step forward. And another step, you can take an attack of opportunity, if you would like, on the one-armed zombie. Hell yeah. That's... that hits. And here I was about to say, slippery bugger. Okay. I'm running out of things that I can use as substitutes. Uh, as you attack, its leg kind of is just sweeped off and lands next to you with a squish. The zombie then takes one more hop, like a hopping step forward. There, that leg. L. Yes, L. Okay, that one is going to move closer. Okay, that one is going to do that. Moved, moved. All right. Now that they have all shuffled into their lines of defense, one of them is going to turn to the Shadow Raz and is going to swing a claw at it. Not gonna hit. Second claw, not gonna hit. It's your AC, uh, right? It, no, it's 17. Oh, okay. Still doesn't hit, though. Okay, yeah. 
Okay, that one hits. So okay. it swings a claw, it goes through the shadow, it swings another claw, goes through the shadow, and then it lunges forward to bite at it with rotten teeth. The bite is what hits. The shadow. Shadow Roz has been nommed. What were you going to say? The the shadow uh, disapparates momentarily, but it will be back. Okay. That one used all its actions. The two surrounding... Or the two next to Axel are going to attack at him and see if they can do anything. These are them the... start... Go ahead. I was just going to confirm that these are the two Ikea zombies on the sides that are attacking me, correct? Yes. Okay. And they just are unable to pierce through your shield and armor. You kind of see the severed head, like, rolling to the side to grant the body view of you as it just swings away. Uh, Nanaha, the the intact zombie next to you swings its claws at you. You dodge out of the way. Swings again. You dodge out of the way. But unfortunately, you weren't paying too much attention after that as the thing lunges at you and bites into your shoulder with its yellow, very old, but yet not spongy teeth. You take four points of piercing damage. Yep. And Axel, your go. All right, I I need a quick clarification here. I'm the drill drawing. So. It, if that's roughly a 15-foot cone, does that yes. the zombie that's directly in front of me, the one that's like been killed a bunch of times and keeps getting back up with one health? Yes. And does that also, that also catches the leg and the hand? Yes. Okay. So Axel is going to dramatically like throw his spear, like point into the ground just to get it out of his hand. Um, uh, burn fiends. And we are going to burning hands through that group of zombies. So, zombies, known for being dexterous, um, everything but the hand fail. Excellent. So the hand takes five damage, and the other six take ten. Fire. Okay, that's done. Hey, you know, we've had two spellcasters who were incredibly strong, so you never know. Okay, that takes ten twice, so that one's dead. Yep, uh, so the zombie directly in front of you... The headless zombie both just fall over. There's the smell of burning flesh as they flop over. The leg is caught in the burst. As is, but the hand dodges out of the way, taking only partial damage. However... The one-legged zombie that is currently trying to hop away seems to be take seems to have taken a bunch of damage as its severed parts were burned. Roz. Oh, I'm gonna real quick. I'm gonna use. I'm oh. gonna spear back up after that. That's all. You were gonna what? 
I mean, oh, pick your spear up. Yeah, that's fine. Roz. Uh, Roz will attack uh, this one with his spear. Okay. Yeah, that's a hit. Mm hmm. He will then utilize his bonus action to create his echo as a shadow forms around him it just peels off taking a few steps over to block that zombie's path before it itself strikes out at that zombie okay so you've used two of those actions yes correct i've got two left okay this is the first time i've ever played with one of these so there's a lot of crunch i see yep i uh I, I sent you a picture, kind of like a little cheat sheet of kind of what it can do. Yeah, I saw that. I actually have the class up as well in the background. So. Ah, okay. So, you take a strike out at that zombie... And there's this squelch as its head rolls off the body and lands into the sand next to it. The headless body itself just kind of, like, stands there wavering. Your shadow appears out of nowhere and stabs at the one-legged zombie that was hopping its way down. And you skewer it completely, it falling over with a squish sickening squelch. Since Roz knocked the head off, would he gain the blood points? No, because it wasn't a kill. Fair enough. All right. Pocket. All right. Maybe the, 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 the only time we're going to be able to actually do this. Uh, steady aim. And then fire off the bow against this one zombie here. He has to give himself advantage so he can get a sneak attack on it. Also to hit. That hits. Thank God. Thank goodness for, for steady aim. And it is sneak attack because I had advantage, right? Yes. And then Wells of the Dead against... Um, does that is that head actually moving or is it just sitting there? It still seems aware. Wheels of the grave, that shit. What's the range on Wheels of the Grave? Thirty feet. Thirty feet from the target that was hit my, the target of my attack. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Uh, once again, as Pocket let lo lets loose an arrow, you see these ghastly figures kind of floating in the air above him, launching arrows with the same attack. Okay. All right. So, these guys. Not, not to be too punny, but is the leg next to Nanaha still standing? It's dead. Okay. When the hopping zombie was killed, it just fell over. Alright. The remaining corpses that are currently shuffling towards the group keep going. There's a like odd sloshing sound coming from them as they get closer. Verity? 
Mm, thinky face, thinky face. Um, okay. Uh, I guess first thing we'll do is we'll use five of our six sorcery points to uh, slurp up another third level spell slot, because I feel like we'll be using a lot of those today. And then we're going to kind of move... Uh, oh, that, I'm drawing boxes. Five, 15 through pocket 20, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, just kind of squeeze past my boy there, and uh, let's see. We need to draw one of these. Hang on a second. And you said you should be able to click on it, right? Yes. I cannot. You have to go back to the arrow control. Yeah. I am on that. Highlight it. Oh, God, it's finicky. Ooh, can I turn it? Yeah. Uh, does anyone know how? Here, I can do it. <laughs> I think you. she's she's attempting to aim a lightning bolt down the line without frying Roz and, and Axel. I think if you box it like a um, like you're playing an RTS or something, I think you get like a c controller at the top where you can move it around. Yeah. Yeah, I see the little square, but it won't let me do anything with it. But click on it. Yeah, it's not letting me rotate it either for some reason. God, roll twenty. You are you have every tool we need, and yet simultaneously you're terrible. Uh, okay, well. I'm assuming, yeah, there we go, yeah. I was trying to be cute and finagle it down the line of zombies without, you know, accidentally frying actual Roz or Axel. I mean, yeah, you could do that. Then she will do that with her brand new third spell slot that she just made. Yeah, so that will be one of those zombies, one of those, one of those. So yeah, you can hit three of them without hitting any uh, hitting any of your frames. Woohoo! I was say I was kind of hoping I'd catch the head too, but it's I don't know. The head's getting caught. Yay! Die head. Eh. Oh, I didn't roll the damage. Damn you! I dragged you right from the book. Oh, yeah, you have to put it in as an attack if you want it to roll the damage. Rip, whatever. 8d6, right? Yeah. Yeah. What's your save? Uh, 16 should be. All right, these dexterous zombies. Yeah, they all fail. This bolt of blackish blue lightning is just completely emanated from Verity's hand washing over these zombies. You see their bodies going stiff as the electricity courses through them. Uh, they fall over, smoking. The one right in front of Rio Raz, though, as it gets zapped, you hear this, like, gurgling like the sound of something being boiled, and then it bursts open before falling over, and copious amounts of snakes begin slithering out of the hollowed-out body. Fucking snakes? Oh, God! These motherfucking snakes on these motherfucking blades. <laughs> oh, hey. and as an aside, um, since that is the spell she... Uh, quote unquote, um, uh, capture or like you know tried to try to discern from the uh, from the the wizard spellbook. She was not ready for the blast of lightning, and so she falls on her ass and is, I guess, technically prone and doesn't have enough movement to get up because she wanted to stay where Pocket was. But then nice. he planted his foot. Very nice. <laughs> All right, Nanaha, you are up. All righty. Uh, I am once again going to shadow step the fuck out of there. Poof. Poof. And I'm going to hit this one.
Okay. Sad. You swing at it, but you are momentarily distracted by the bolts of black lightning that almost singed you. That you swing a little wild because the adrenaline still hasn't, like, coursed through you yet. <laughs> Too scary. That one hits. How did that one hit? The other one was a 12. Oh, sorry. That first one hit. I forgot you get advantage. And right, I'd like you... to use one of my uh, expenditures and do a vampiric strike on the first one. Okay. Um, you do get your health. So roll and get the health. Oh, you get the seven health back. Yeah. And uh, roll me a wisdom save, please. One moment, please. <sighs> the there's blood oozing out of the side of the spongy staff as you connect with the the corpse with your first strike and you feel a little lightheaded but you push through it um as you connect you feel like there's this feeling like you swung at a like a piñata basically and from the hole that you created in its seemingly hollow exterior, there are snakes just falling at your feet. All these motherfucking snakes. <laughs> uh, you're, so I'll take your second attack as it was. It would not have hit the snakes. That's okay. Hey, Saya. All right. Very glad to be up in the sky where the snakes are not. Um, so we're going to fire Eldritch Blast at the one, the first set of snakes in front of Raz. Okay. That is a hit. And then if they're still squirming, the second one goes for them. They are definitely still squirming. I figured. And that hits. And we'll add the extra three cold damage to the second one. Okay. They are still squirming about. You have There are several dead snakes kind of slithering or laying <laughs> amongst the sand. Some of them are frozen. Some of them are just blasted apart, but there are still plenty of snakes kind of writhing over the bodies of their fallen brethren. Well, I tried, Raz. <laughs> That'll be my turn. Alright. There's one last Ikea zombie. It gonna do an attack against the ghost. Alright, the first swing of the claws is a hit with at 17. Whoosh. Alright, that's it has no more movement and there are no targets next to it, so that's all it can do. Axel. Push to talk. What's Axel going to do? Am, am I not talking? Hello? You weren't for a second there, but I could hear you upstairs. Oh, okay. Um, so Axel is going to um, step into the, the dead space here next to Raz between the two zombies, well, the zombie and the snake. Mm-hmm. Do the first attack on with my spear on the snakes. Okay. Uh, 
you swing your spear down, trying to get several snakes. However, they seem to slither and writhe around your spear point, and you don't connect with any of them. All right. Uh, attempt two at snake kebab. Oh. Yeah, that hits. So uh, this whole game, I've wanted to crit smite something, but I'm not going to smite some snakes. Mm -hmm. I would. I mean, shit, they're snakes, or man. Or are you? N n n no, I'm not. We'll, we'll just we'll just uh, take the damage here. Hey. You thrust your, your spear down angrily, going through about five or six of these slithering snakes. Many of them are starting to scatter into the bushes out of fear. There are a handful still slithering around, hissing. All right, um, and then I guess we'll try to bop a couple of them with the back end. Okay. Concuss those snakes. Yeah. Yeah, they are scattered to the wind. You golf swing with the back end of your spear, and just several of these snakes just fly, some of them splashing into the lake, some of them just laying where they are. All right, and then I will turn my attention to the Ikea zombie, and that's my turn. Okay, Roz. Uh, Roz slides down to face the Ikea zombie. Stabbing at it with his spear. That is a hit. All right. As you swing at it, you hit you hit the thing like at about the shoulder level, and its arm just detaches, falling at its feet in front of you. Blackish ichor kind of squelching out of the wound. And uh, the shadow coalesces off his back, and then steps to there to just kind of disaway the one that's still running through the rubble from getting mm -hmm. in at the back line. Sure. That's it. Okay, pocket. Um, well, uh, I'll stay here, do it again. Uh, steady aim, but I'll aim at uh, this far one here, past the hand. Okay. That is a hit. And Your I'll arrow goes right through it, and kind of like shooting a attack at a balloon, the top half of this very bloated zombie squelches open, and m more snakes just kind of pour out of the empty cavity. Oh god. Um, but I will wheel to the grave the, the, the hand. Okay. Alright, the hand, that's seven, so seven damage to the IKEA zombie. Alright. This guy gonna do a thing. Shuffle. 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 That's all his movement. And he gonna try and do an attack. Okay, that is a 17 on the dot. Okay, okay. And it sort of like gurgles and sloshes its way at, at the shadow swinging. Doing one point of damage. 
all the points of damage it needed to disapparate the shadow. Yes. All right. Where are these snakes? Okay. You're flying. The snakeies is gonna slither at pocket. Oh no! Kissing. Counter did hiss. Go, did it go through Roz's actual threatened area? No. Or around. It went around. Because okay. it it started about here, so it's like do do do. That's fine. You should... Alrighty. That is a 19. Hit me. Uh, roll a con save, please. Not at advantage. All right. You take... Eight points of piercing damage. Blech. And you take 10 points of poison damage as the various snakes chomping at your leg. Like there's this purplish sort of puffiness to the bite marks. No way, that actually hurts! Okay. These snaky boys, I think, are going to try to attack Nana, huh? They are going to fail, flail, mi flail about miserably as Nanaha dances around the various snakes lunging at her. They are going to move under her, though. So, they're swarming about her feet. Oh. Okay, Verity. That's my fear. How would one, like, make a melee attack against snakes? Try to get as many as you can. Okay, well, she'll just, you know, she'll stand up by herself because Pocket didn't apparently give a fuck that she fell over and just was like, sharp bow. So we got 5, 15, and then we shall attempt to to inflict wounds on the pile of snakes. Can you do that? You certainly can. I mean, I know technically you can do that, but I was just wondering how, like, thematically it would work, but okay. That hits. Don't touch my pocket, snakes! Your hand lights up with this glow, like this black glow to it, and you reach down and you grab you actually grab a few snakes at once as you go down there. And this blackish pulse emanates out of your hand. Several of the snakes start shriveling up and just laying there limp in a pile. About half of the swarm has been diminished at this point. Uh, well, I don't have any more like ridiculous AOE stuff to do, so uh, that's a that's a turn. Nanaha. All right, we're going to continue with this game. Uh, fuck this noise. I don't want snakes at my feet. <laughs> Whew, just in range. Okay. Okay, there's a zombie in front of you. I clicked to roll. There we go. Yep, that hits. I am, if nothing but consistent. Yes, you are. With your first swing of the staff, once again, it's like a piñata. Except, instead of delicious treats, there are various snakes that fall out of it. Worst piñata right ever. where we started. Have you ever had snake jerky? It might be delicious. Hey, at least All I'm right. not on my feet right now. 
I'm sure they're coming, though. Yes, they are currently slithering about you. You yelp and whack a mole a few of the snakes as they pour out of the the uh, now hollowed out body. Okay, Saya. All right, we're gonna fire our first Eldritch Blast at the ones in Pocket's feet. Okay. You shoot a blast of energy into the swarm of snakes, and they all slither around and are completely missed. It's an awkward angle, guys. Take two. That one hits, however. And we'll add the extra three cold damage. Okay. You let loose this enormous green blast, like, line of energy, and various snakes scatter up into the air like debris, many of their bodies frozen, hitting the ground shattering, the rest of them just laying there, lifeless. Good. Now they can't bite Verity. <laughs> Verity looks up and she goes, thank- oh! And then mumbles something about, well, that's not really the outfit I would choose to fly in, but, you know, Okay. <laughs> Literally zero shame. The all right. The severed arm is going to sl shuffle across the ground five feet. It is going to attempt to claw at Roz's leg, but Roz, you just kind of kick it away like a nuisance. And the Ikea zombie is going to try and flail with its other non-severed arm against Axel, clattering against the armor, and it tries to bite in, and you see a few teeth break against the metal pauldrons. Axel. Um, well, let's attempt to finish the, the job on this guy's teeth. So uh, we will we will uh, spear the Ikea zombie. Okay. That is a hit. All right. You swing the spear around, and with a thud. One of its legs just falls off. Squelches in front of you in a pool of blackish ichor. Alright, uh, second spear attack will be back on the body. Again. Okay. That is a hit. The other arm is cleaved off. Um, and then, uh, <laughs> let's, let's butt it, we'll butt in strike the body, see if we can go full Black Knight, Black Knight on this. Sure. Uh, where is it? There it is. Shall we call it a draw? Well, you don't have to, because that was enough to do it in. You swing in with the butt end of your spear. And you hear the sound of ribs cracking and breaking, the thing falling over. Both of the scrambling severed arms go limp before falling over. Um, and then Axel will uh, move back up here, just like take this space in case anything else shows up. Okay. okay. Roz? Uh, seeing that there's lots of... Okay, so all the little li limbs died when the main body died? Yes. Okay. There are currently no more zombies. There are only snakes. Ah. Well, then in that case, he will uh, go assist Nanaha with the snakes that she is dealing with. Okay. 
That hits. Okay. I really like doing 14 damage with this thing. <laughs> you do. Shish kebab style, you swing the blood spear down, and several of them are just skewered on the end of the spear before you shake them off with a wet squelch. Uh, and they are they will be marked. Okay, marked snake. Okay, anything else? No. Okay, pocket. Uh, I'm seeing how he was going to hit those snakes, but there's only... They, they, they look like they got that. There's only one other one. Um, third time's the charm. Uh, we're going to line up, wait for that lineup of a few snakes and pierce through a few heads. Uh, steady aim. And then shoot the far, the far snakes. Okay. There it is. That's what I was waiting for. Okay, fuck. Go ahead, roll your fuck. Roll it. Well, that's uh, nothing. Your sneak attack is also but, doubled, yes. FYI. 22 plus the 6. Okay, 22 plus 6 is 28. You managed to skewer several of the snaky boys with a single arrow. And that's it my turn. was very surprising. How do snakes show surprise? They go tense. <laughs> hmm. All right. Roz is somewhere in that mess. Okay, that's a 24 to hit. Uh, that will miss. No, no, obviously it hits. Hey, with some of the stuff you guys are pulling off, I don't even doubt that anymore. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, that AC is still 20. That hits. All right, that's eight points of piercing rounded down to four. And I need you to make a con save, please. All right. Um, you take 10 points of poison damage as the various snakes nibble at your ankle. Snakes. Ah, snakes! The other ones just slither their way over there. They're not able to do anything. They had to double dash, but Verity, there are snakes. Well, I mean, snakes will be touched, apparently, hopefully. I'm assuming that's good. I didn't even see you were doing Inflict Wounds. Sorry, yeah, that hits. Oh, sorry. Touch! Better than average. Damn, that's really good, actually. The majority of the snakes shrivel up and die as you go in. This pulse of blackish-gray energy is emanated from your hand. Um, those of you close enough to see it's kind of like they went through rapid decomposition in seconds just think pocket it's the same hand she heals you with hey, Nana hey, Chimera. all right uh i have nowhere i need to go so punch you punch you punch you Boy, looks like the first round. Yeah, the first swing hits. Everything else just slips. It's okay. Yeah. 
you're able to whack-a-mole them, getting a little overconfident. You start swinging, and there is no snake, only ground. They're slippery little buggers, that's all. As a consolation, uh, do you know anyone else who has the balls to just punch a snake in the face? Yeah. Excuse you? <laughs> who's standing right next to you? I didn't You're think you were punching. Exploding them. All right, first Eldritch Blast is aimed at the snakes at Verity's feet. That is a hit. And then if they're still squirming, I'll aim another one at him. Okay. They are Now they are not. <laughs> yeah, that'll have the extra three on it, too. So this time she doesn't bother to look up and say thanks after last time. She just kind of gives... <laughs> she does the thumbs up she's been practicing, but it's... It's like not right. She only bends it like the at the first knuckle, so or at the second knuckle. So she's got like this flat hand with a thumb up. <laughs> well, we'll work on that, Verity. And thank you so much, Fluffy, for gifting a sub to Chimera Gamer. Chimera, I hope you uh, enjoy Eddie. your emotes. Um, Axel. Um, what is, is it? Just the one group of snakes left on the battlefield? Yes, there's just one group of snakes. Okay. Axel will move over to the snakes. Axel will attempt to spear the snakes. Okay. Yes, you spear snakes. Okay. You skewer several of them with your spear. They are still slithering and hissing about. Alright, uh, second spear attack. Okay, Jeez. those also get you some danger noodle kebabs. Consistent. They are still squirming a boot. As you yeah. as you start getting like this line of skewered snakes building up on your spear. Um, and then we will butt and strike the rest. Okay. That hits. This is where the magic is. Aww. All right, they are. That most of them are dead or scattered, but they are still there um, until Roz hits. All right, that's right, get him, Roz. Okay, Roz, how do you want to kill these like half a dozen snakes? Uh, as we've been skewering them, he probably just continues doing such things and then just flings them off against the rock. All right. Um, go ahead and roll your damage and your 2d6 temporary. Oh, wow, that's the lowest damage I've seen you roll. He will also bonus action second win. Okay. How dare I make you bleed your own blood? At this right. point... Like, what's up with that? <laughs> at this point, there seems to be some quieting on the shoreline as the deluge of bodies emerging begins to secede. And... For the moment, you seem to have some time to breathe. Off in the distance, over the dark blue surface of the lake, you see a greenish twinge of light kind of emanating off in the distance. For the time being, the seems to be stiller waters as there are no more corpses emerging. Can we all see the, the tinge? Yes, because it, it's getting pretty dark out, so the little flash of light off in the distance is visible. Okay, so, you know, Verity will kind of, like, call up to, I'm assuming, still, still airborne, Saya? Yeah, although the ten minutes will probably be up 
pretty short like because that was about yeah. five rounds so so i'll probably would... be floating down as it looks like we don't have anything new coming in okay well i mean this doesn't really matter what do you make of that possibly what's ever, whatever's causing this are you certain you have to go into the water to find out yes by yourself well i mean it's not like any of you can breathe underwater unless you're hiding abilities from me pocket can you breathe underwater um i don't know maybe not to alarm anyone but if you get bit by a snake does that mean i'm gonna turn into a snake now uh no probably I... yes scary enough i believe both answers axel look at your cat he probably needs help all right Pocket, what do you got <laughs> no well i just got i got bit by a snake and it, i got i got bit by the raven to turn into a raven you guys got bit by werewolves to turn into werewolves i just assume fluffy what's that you feel a little thump at your side nanaha as piddlewick flops to the ground he goes and runs over and picks up one of the snakes and starts wobbling the snake corpse around. He's having a bit of fun. Doing, like, oh. the rubber pencil thing, but with a snake body. <laughs> Pocket, I got bit by a zombie. Do I look like a zombie? Little bit. <laughs> Maybe Very I should have a shower before well, I ask that question. That was a rude Pocket. Oh <laughs> she my. did come back from the dead, I'm just saying. Verity kind of pokes her head over Nanaha's shoulder, like Piddlewick, and where were you in the middle of all that? We could have used your help. Points into the bag. <sighs> hey, Piddlewick, fun idea for the next time this happens. Do you want to, like, hang out in the bag and then, like, throw things at bad guys from there? He nods enthousi enthusiastically. Excellent. Next time, we got a little box, okay? He goes and grabs a bunch of snake corpses and starts stuffing them in your bag. I don't know how much damage that's going to do. That's dinner, if nothing else. He throws one Excuse at Pocket. Me? You filthy animal! And then shrugs. It didn't do any damage. See? Uh, rocks, but don't throw them at our friends, okay? He goes and starts pulling some of the snake corpses sadly out of the bag. D don't throw them at Pocket, either. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. Pocket is a friend of mine. I'd be very sad if he got hurt. He looks up at, at Nanaha and Axel. And then slowly walks over to Pocket and, like, awkwardly pats him on the leg. <laughs> I Let me guess. It's gold. the leg that got bitten. No. Aww. Um... Can I make a medicine check on that wound to see if he's just hurt or if he's actually, like, been poisoned? Sure, go ahead. Axel knows all. <laughs> um, I am exactly at 27 hit points out of 45, <laughs> you medicine god. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, you realize that whatever poison is coursing through his veins has already done its damage. There doesn't seem to be anything lingering. If there was any more side effects to them, they would have happened by now. Alright. Uh, you'll be okay, Pocket. Whatever it was should be, should be gone now. Just uh, maybe get Nanaha to bandage up. I mean, I'm fine for now, I guess, but uh, sure. Up to you, Midir. Um, if we're gonna have to prepare to stand by the lake where all the bodies came out to potentially save Saya, then yes. She is not going in there in the middle of the night. I, I, right, Saya? I'm waiting for morning. Then I think we'll be okay for the moment. We should check on the town and see if any got past us. True. Nothing shiny or valuable on any of the corpses. They're just zombies and tattered clothes and damp shit. 
and snakes. <laughs> All right, yeah. I'll uh I'll I'll head back I'll start heading back to town. Okay. <laughs> we could have them collect the snakes for boots. And then we could have uh we could have a beatbox competition because we'd have boots and cats. <laughs> it's true. Oh <laughs> Glad to hear you listening, pounds. You can't not listen to the DM. <laughs> This feels unfair. I'm feeling being held hostage. <laughs> oh, God. Boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats. Just think, Pounce, you can stop all of this on Sundays when that becomes a thing. <laughs> yeah. As you make your way back to the gate, you see a few scattered bodies that may have slipped alongside from the other way, but the repaired gate is holding strong. Many of the people are exhausted. You see all of the town's guard focused at like the, the top of the, the town. You get in through the gate. The mood is somber but a little I mean hopeful somber but exhausted is there once we get in the gates is there obviously like or I know I shouldn't say obviously but I assume Isaac isn't near the near the north gate uh no is is there someone who is like serving as somewhat of a leader here not really okay um, um, you do. <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Okay, nope. Strike that. Actually, you do see um, someone. One moment. Please don't be giant hand axe guy. Well, that's Isaac. One moment. My apologies. Uh, you see a woman in um, rather nice attire, kind of a, a gown. Her hair is pulled up into a taut bun. Okay, so she does not look like a soldier. She does not look like a soldier, but she is more or less giving orders, and they seem to be following them. Um, so I, I will approach her and like s salute, um, and, uh, uh, I, I don't believe I've made your acquaintance, but, uh, we've just come back from the, the shore. Uh, what are your casualties in the town? No casualties tonight. I appreciate what you have done for the town. My name is, uh, Fiona Vakter. Since our dear Burgomaster is more concerned with his own well-being, I have thought that it would be the right thing to do to ensure order in his selfish absence. Your actions are most uh, most noble, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Vachter. Uh, yes, I don't, Mrs. Vachter. <laughs> Uh, Lady Fiona Vachter. Vachter is the family name. Lady Vachter. It is a pleasure to finally meet you. Uh, I had my servant invite you for dinner before uh, Baron Vargas had his uh, temper tantrum at the last festival. Sai has been watching this, and she's going to sidle over and give a curtsy. Our deepest apologies for not being able to attend the dinner. I imagine it would have been a much more pleasant experience than the festival. They always are. <laughs> but it is good to see that you have made your way back. While you are here... You will be under the f my family's protection. So if any 
anyone who is a uh, loyal thug to Baron Vargas, let them know that Lady Vactor will not stand for it. Um, Lady Vactor, we, uh, we may cause some trouble while we're in town. Are, will you, uh, are you ready to back that? <laughs> as long as your trouble won't uh, ruin the village, okay. I should be fine with that. If, in that regard, if you would like, I, ca I will re-extend the dinner invitation. If you want to come to my manor, we can discuss this more formally. Another would dinner be... would be delightful. I intend on finding out what is going on with the lake during the day. That would be greatly appreciated. The people here are getting very tired of the constant attacks. And she just kind of looks off and, like, puts puts a hand to her chest. It is almost as if the foolish festivals that Baron Vargas has been throwing has done nothing to dissuade the dangers of the land from attacking. Who could have thought, that, who, or who could have predicted such a thing? I would like to insight check to see if she's being, like, sincere or if she's kind of just, like, you know... Hamming it up for our for our uh, to try and like get on our good side. What insight? Hello, roll twenty. There it goes. <laughs> From what you can tell, she is laying on the sarcasm a little heavy, but it is very clear that she has no. Love for the Burgomaster. And that while she is laying on the sarcasm a little heavier than one normally would, she genuinely, you know, she genuinely wants what's best for the town. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I was fishing for there. Okay, th then Verity will keep quiet and, you know, just let her, you know, ham it up. time is it currently it is some flavor of of midnight we can't hear you are you expecting more of the my mic shouldn't be muted can you hear me now yes i can okay. hear you all right cool um all right, <clears throat> so t to lady vactor um, do, um, are you expecting more of the undead tonight or if they, is it usually just like one group of them? Um, I, I, you know, if, if we're, if we're still needed at the shoreline, I would be glad to stay there. The, the bulk of it is usually pretty early on. So if there are any stragglers, they would be much more manageable for the militia to handle. You should get your rest if you are going on some sort of adventure tomorrow. <laughs> I would like to make sure that you are uh, prepared. That would that would be a great help. Thank you very much, Lady Vactor. It is my pleasure. So I'll give her another curtsy and wander off with the rest of the group. Uh, who's still, like, injured right now? Uh, Pocket and I, I believe. I've taken some damage. I wouldn't call it injured. I'm just over half. Alright. She will go over to Pocket. Uh, 26 out of 40. Okay. She'll go over to Pocket and then follow up to go over to... Nanaha, and she'll put a hand on your shoulder, and there'll just be the soft light, and
Uh, Nanaha, you get back 12 HP. And Pocket, you get back 14. Well, thank you. That I mean, unnecessary, but really, thank you. I, I did not realize I was in the presence of another priest. May you walk in the, the light, Lady Vachter. Yeah, you as well. Did she is... say a prayer to anyone specific? Thank you. Uh, no, actually. And did she do them both at once? Like, the spell no. may have been... Okay, all right. That was question marks there, but okay, good. Yeah, no, she did one at a time. No, she did not invoke anyone's name in particular. Thank you, that was much appreciated. It is no problem. I have not had to reach out for assistance today. And so I am. I am uh, at my best, you could say. Now go. Get get some rest. You have deserved it. Not had to reach out for assistance today. That sounds... Hmm. To the end, I guess. Um, is there anything y'all want to do at the inn tonight at the Blue Water? Um, oh shoot, what's the name of the son again? The bartender. Erwin. Erwin. Right, I, Davian is the father, I keep thinking it. Um, just when, uh, um, when there's like a moment when he's alone, I just want to kind of take him aside and um, relay his father's message that he wishes the, the Davian, or not, that, oh my god. <laughs> uh, that Davian wants his son to come back to the winery and, you know, to mend fences and, and stuff. Not literally mend fences, but, like, figuratively. I, I believe the term you're looking for is uh, mend bridges. Oh, uh, yeah, that works, too. We have a lot of bridges where I grew up. We had a lot of fences. I will take your word for it, friend. Uh, go get some rest. It's good to actually have a night without screaming for once. I'm sure. Thank you. I want to find. I want to grab Erwin aside on my own at some point. He strokes his big, bushy, black and gray beard. What? What's up? Hi. Okay, first, I missed you. It was It's really great seeing you. You're really kind. Um, but also, and I want to actually take a look around and see, like, like, take a few steps back, actually look around and see if anybody's watching us talk. Okay. Um, roll perception. Also, not at advantage. Okay. Um, is anyone in the party trying to or watching Pocket walk off? Actually, yes. I'm in bed. I'm searching for a bed. <laughs> All right. Um, Saya's not going to see him, but <laughs> you see, Saya seems to be focused in your direction. That's fine. <laughs> um, but pull everyone aside uh, and kind of whisper to him. Um, so. Uh, we encountered a little uh, puppet friend uh, who's really fucking creepy uh, to me. Um, and uh, he looks like a little, well, a really creepy fucking puppet. Uh, and he's the one who threw the, the, the rock through your window. But also, I'm really convinced that he's trying to murder people. So if you could keep an eye out, or you can have someone, I don't know, just keep an eye out for... Or ear out for 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 little footsteps. Uh, someone who might try to kill you in the middle of the night, etc. Um, I'm trying to find a way to get some evidence that that he's actually a murderer. Can you roll me a persuasion check, please? That 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 is a lot. That is a lot to just. Say at once. 
considering the things that I've seen here, that's actually not even the half of it. Well, we will take it seriously. If we see anything, we will let you know. Are you sure it's not just a child uh, dressed up? I mean, a walking puppet is a little strange. When you see it, you'll know. I see, I see. It might pretend to also just be a doll, but uh, no, it's, it's, it's a real puppet and it's really fucking creepy. All right, well, we will take... Take your word for it. Um, did you try talking to this? That's crazy toy maker. That's a separate issue altogether. And um, I will pull out the straw dummy. Uh, there's also this thing. This is not the one that I'm talking about, but there's this one, and it's also really creepy and somehow attached to me. Um, but uh, I got this from that guy. Actually, Blinsky, I think, is also really cool. You should actually go talk to him. He's a really sweet guy. I'm going to just talk his ear off about uh, Blinsky. And Otto. So, he didn't try to hide from Saya watching? No. Alright, when he pulls the doll out, she's actually going to walk up the, the Strahd puppet, and I'm going to remove Curse on the puppet itself. Alright, so fun, funny story. The puppet was given to Nanaha. There's a reason Touché. why I there's a reason why I did not stop days from talking. <laughs> Fair, but Saya doesn't trust the puppet, so she's still going to try to remove a curse on it. Yeah, no, yeah, go ahead. Saya comes up and there's this greenish glow that washes over the puppet. Sorry, Irwin. Um, they think that the puppet is is making me murder things, and they're not convinced that it's this other puppet. And just believe me on this one. She's gonna look at Irwin. I don't know exactly what's going on, but I don't trust this, and I don't trust a lot of things. But we seem to trust the new murder puppet. I didn't say anything about that pocket. Right, um, well, I can tell whatever it is you did seem to have done something. I, I am no practitioner of magic, but I have seen enough who are. As for your other puppet, who is a murder puppet, but not the murder puppet who is the Strad puppet, you have, do, do you, Okay, I, I know I, I know this land is, is haunted and cursed, but, like, seriously, I think you just gave me a, an aneurysm as I was trying to figure this out. Yeah, that, yeah, we, That's we, 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 we get a pocket. lot of that. But he's small, um, has a really creepy face and, a, like, a jester hat, like Blinsky does. Um, and, uh, well, I guess I'll just describe... Uh, Piddlewick to him. I I do not know anything about this puppet man, but maybe Blinsky will. I don't. This seems like sort of up his alley. Just keep an eye out is all. Um, and then I'll go upstairs and go to bed. All right. Um, Moggett follows Pocket in and settles down to watch Pocket with under orders to wake Axel if Pocket gets up and doesn't invite Mogget to follow. Okay. I will grabby hands to cuddle with, with, with Mogget. <laughs> Alright, um, Pocket, can you do me a favor? Yes. Can you roll me a constitution save? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Saya, in the middle of the night, you get a feeling of confusion 
from Mogget over your link. Well, out of bed and moving to that room. <laughs> As you open the door, Pocket is asleep. And you see the small mechanical visage of Piddlewick looking up at you. And you see Pocket's hand in a glass of water. You get back to Nanaha's room. You are not to mess with Pocket in the night. He scampers off. She's going to remove Pocket's paw from the water. The damage is done. (laughs) Yeah, there is... um... It it smells litter boxy. That's all I'll say. Gross. I I mean, the damage is already done. I'm just going to shape water them clean. (laughs) Just to see if... Like, I'm not even going to wake them up first. We're going to see what happens. Okay. I mean, we're dry. We just still just reek of ammonia. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Ugh, gross. Good job, Mogget. Keep it up. So the night goes by pretty uneventfully. You all wake at your normal circadian rhythm, whatever that is in this dingy gray land. Axel, Pocket, there's a, an ammonia smell in your room. Good lord, Pocket, go outside. <laughs> I, I, it wasn't me! Okay, well, okay, it was. But it wasn't. I don't... Uh, Saya I'm pops her gonna... head in. It was you, but it wasn't your fault. There's this, There's a glass of water next to the nightstand that you don't remember getting. So was this you? Thanks for the water? There was someone playing a trick on you in the night. Mogget informed me, but not before you, um, had your accident. I... I'm just gonna start picking up the sheets and everything and bringing them downstairs (laughs) and showing her when paying whatever nominal (laughs) fee in silver for new sheets, because those are just done for. Five silver. (laughs) <laughs> he just is you just see this look of sheer confusion and astonishment on his face don't, don't just we're, we're gonna this, we're moving on <laughs> what's for breakfast uh, porridge this morning we would love some <laughs> alright I will I will go get done the cut to get started on that. You go, you go take care of whatever it is you need to take care of. I'm gonna go trash the, the sheets and find somewhere to just like bathe. Not too hard to do. <laughs> all right. Eventually, you all get cleaned up. Get your meals. You have some time to discuss your plans for the day. So is anybody actually able to go down with Saya into the water? Not for very long. (laughs) Um, It depends on how deep she needs to go. Um, I can stay about 30 feet under and transpose myself between my shadow on the on a boat to breathe which means in theory that I could stay down there forever based on the dreams would I know I need to go pretty deep or seems like it um does anyone in the group happen to have paper oh absolutely absolutely <laughs> You see this little pumpkin-faced mechanical head poking out of Nanaha's bag of holding. And he's making grabby hands towards Verity. I thought she gave him one of her spare notebooks. Did he just not keep it? Oh, right. Sorry, I forgot about that. So he tears a piece of paper out. 
and kind of folds it into a boat and puts it on the table. Okay, boat, yes. What will we do with the boat? He points to you, points to the boat, and then just kind of pushes the boat towards Saya. Okay, so I could sit on a boat, but I still can't go down by her. We hit her with a boat, got it. Please don't hit her with a boat. Verity flicks Pocket's ear, not helping. Or we tie a rope around Piddlewick and he can go down into the water with Saya while we sit on a boat holding on to the other end of the rope. True. Piddlewick, do you need to breathe? Takes his head no. But kind of like starts like waving at you, but then like slowly start stops waving like slowly and jerky, like mimicking being rusted. I'm going to cross uh. chloroform off the list of ways to kill Piddlewick. <laughs> okay, so Saya would still have to go alone and we'd just be on a boat above her. He shrugs. It's fine. You guys will know if something bad happens because you'll have Mogget with you. Mogget can't swim. Neither can I. Mogget and I get closer every day. You can't swim, Mogget? I mean, some can. I'm, I'm just really not good at it. I think Pocket can probably swim if tested, but I don't think he wants to. Well, when we're that in the too. boat, we can always test him out. They always say the best way to do it is dive right in and try. No. Yes. Maybe. Zombie waters. While I appreciate no. that you all are concerned for my safety, the, the fact of the matter is, unless any of you can breathe and are good at swimming, you're not going to keep up anyway. Well, we can camp out at the shore for the day, worst case. The, um, we, we have a, we do have a boat for on the, uh, the cloak. At least some of, some of us could row out, at least be above or something. Like, be closer in case of, in case we're needed. Or we could just see if there's a boat locally and have instant boat for when horrible things happen. That's true, too. Hey, Erwin, do you have a rowboat? <laughs> what What do you need a rowboat for? Not many people go out on that lake. Well, we're some of the people that need to go out on that lake. I'm that, going in I mean, it, that so. makes sense. <laughs> you know um, where we could rent one? I know some people that I could go talk to about this. Um, there is... Uh, I mean, there are a few people who used to fish in the lake. Um, there is that uh, drunkard Bluto that um, he hasn't been out on the lake in a while. Seems like something happened that... I don't know. He's he's been strange since then, but uh, he still pays off his uh, his tab. Well, we can approach Bluto then. Thank you for the information. No problem. Um, what, I guess, um, can I ask what you're planning on doing with the boat? Being ready to dive in if we hear gurgling in a bad way. What business do you have on the lake? I'm going underneath it. I see. Is there something in particular you're looking for? I'll know when I see it. 
I see. Well, I guess while you're out there, if you could be on the lookout for some of the uh, the missing children and uh, the missing priestess, I am pretty sure that it is related to the whole situation with the l the monsters in the lake. Do you mean Matilda, or is there a different priestess missing? Matilda, yes. My eyes will be peeled. Good to know. There are a few um, little river delta islands on the far, th far eastern side of the lake. It is possible whatever you're looking for might be underneath those. I do not know. But it it is a uh, it's something to potentially have for a target. Saya just nods. Just some <laughs> Just some insight. We've uh, had a few flybys, and it seems like something is going on over that side. Seriously, thank you so much. No problem. You're my favorite, Erwin. Uh, same to you. <laughs> Just don't, don't give me any more crazy stories. I think I've had my fill for a little while. No promises. I wasn't being serious. I know that that won't happen <laughs> with you lot. <laughs> what has been hiding in your bag other than, like, the one thing? Um, that's actually a good point. Thank you, Lumi. He kind of gives like a side eye towards the party specifically towards Nanaha's direction everything okay Erwin do you what's with he looks at pocket he's the one apparently your son is a murderer son I don't know this small puppet man. Hey, uh, Piddlewick, what's up? Looks in the bag. He shrugs. Like, he kind of crawls halfway out of the bag. Shrugs. His little jester bells dingle. This is the first I've heard of murder. At least from this guy. What? He motions to pocket. That's what your friend told me. He threw a rock through this window. I caught him. I just, and I think he's the one who murdered whoever back at back at to the mansion. Whoever? Maybe the less the said about that incident said the better. All I'm going to say is that you might want to go talk to the toy maker about this one. Good point. Pedalwick kind of tilts his head in confusion. Okay, so do we talk to the toy maker or go swimming first? I would like to have as much time as possible. Uh, All right, so I'm let's going... go for a swim. Well, uh, yes, half if possible, I prefer go. not to have another night of this nonsense. Hmm. A couple of you can go talk to Blinsky. Okay, idea. Pocket and I go talk to Blinsky, and anybody who wants to go with Saya goes with Saya. This is Valaki. Since I know Pocket Menace. does not want to go for a swim. Menace of Twitch. I will go with Saya, and she kind of looks at her kind of weird, like, 
you know, am I doing this right? Because apparently magic users stick together with the, like with a very high inflection question mark at the end. So I was just going to give her a thumbs up. <laughs> well, that would mean that uh, our new firecaster Axel should go with you and I'll stick with Pocket and Nana. Huh? That can't be a disaster with all three of the charisma casts well, going elsewhere. To be, to be fair, uh, <laughs> Nanaha and I are also really, really good at running. Also, my charisma's 14. I'm not horrible. <laughs> Saya, should we uh, stop by, Bak by Lady Bakir on the way out? She seems to be interested in our uh, success. I, don't I thought think... she wanted dinner. Yeah, I don't think there's anything Lady Vokter can do for us for this part. She wanted dinner, so we'll see her for dinner. Perfectly reasonable. <laughs> well, if that's All right. settled... <laughs> Alright, so pocket... Roz and Nanaha are going to go to Blinsky. And Saya, Axel, and Verity are going to head towards the lake. We'll just head towards the lake once we're done with Blinsky. It's just, you know, doing things since no range. All right. Um, who, who do we want to start with first? Team Swimmy or Team Spooky? Do the spooky. <laughs> oh wait, the the, the the swim team. I mean I suspect this thing will take longer, so Yeah, it will probably take longer, and since we've only got about a half hour left, maybe we should do Team Spooky with Blinsky and then we can start with Team Swim. Why are we why are we spooky? You mean Pitaluke isn't spooky? You really are? Because we got I, the creepy the lake is spooky. <laughs> According to Pocket. Okay, fine. Team Pocket, then. You could be the de facto leader. Team Saya. All right. Okay, there's Team Saya and then Team <laughs> I, Like, I'm really excited about doing this, but it feels like it's probably going to be a longer thing. And so, yeah, I think probably. So let's just start it and see where it goes. Mm -hmm. All right. You make your way. The three of you make your way further down the village. People have started to clean up the bodies from the previous attacks. Since there wasn't really any breaking of the lines last night, people are cautiously heading outside again. Some of them seem wary of the three of you. But eventually you make your way to the cramped uh, shop with the rocking horse wooden sign dangling above it. You open the door and there's a little bit of a jingle as a bell overhead. And light travels in through the, through the dirty windows. You see the large man with the threadbare jester's outfit. The small monkey on his shoulder, angrily tugging at a tutu around his waist. Uh, um, Blinsky sees you all and gives a, like a clap of happiness. It is friends! Welcome to Blinsky! Are you here to buy your toy for, for, for other friends? Possibly, you're amazing. I just needed to say that. You are the amazing one. I really like this guy. Nah, nah, he's so cool. He is. Uh, so, we love your jester's attire. We met a friend who also wears jester's attire. I was wondering if you've met our friend Piddlewick before, and I asked Piddlewick to come out of the bag. 
Little Wick stays in the bag. Well, come on. Don't you want to show off in front of another fellow jester? He stays in the bag. Pedalwick, you can pull him out of the bag. Out and grab you from the bag. I really would prefer you to I knew he was on your coward. own. Did Piddlewick hear po uh, Pocket say a coward? Yes, he still stays in the bag. Please don't get angry for me for this, and I grab him out of the bag. As you grab him, the small little uh, mechanical man is flailing around, trying to wiggle out of your hand like a an over-anxious dog. I promise, Piddlewick, I will not let any harm come to you, okay? <gasps> Is that what I think it is? I'm holding Piddlewick like a child. Is that... Oh, you have brought him to me. So you, you do have... know him. That is... That is greatest masterpiece of my instructor. I never thought such things were real. Piddlewick, why are you afraid of this man? He thinks you're awesome. He, like, tries to climb onto your shoulder. As long as you stay with me, you can climb to my shoulder. I will let you, okay? He clings onto your neck for pretty dear life. That's he fine. Is Mr. Piss of the great toy maker Fritz von Wertz. I never thought such things were real. Could, could you leave? Could you leave him with me? This would be greatest thing for toy make toy making. I don't think Pedalwick wants to stay with you. If he had a better reaction upon seeing you, I'd be inclined, but I don't think so. You can talk to him if you'd like, though. You. Mr. Pismin, were you made by Fritz von Wieck? Pillowick kind of looks pensively at him and pensively at Nanaha. Again, I'm not going to leave you with him. It's okay. Just answer his questions and then we'll be on our way, okay, Pillowick? He nods softly. I knew it. Friends, I am begging of you. I studied under Van Wierg for many years. He mysteriously had gone disappearing. This is closest chance Blinsky has to understanding greater work. I am begging of you. I'm um, sorry, I can't leave him with you. He doesn't want to. Sorry, Pocket, you were saying? Well, no, I... I guess I'm, I'm, I'm mixed because, I mean, he's cruel, um, but I also wouldn't want someone to go somewhere against their will. Granted, I'll be sending... I'll be you know, sending Strahd to the grave against his will, but that's a different story. <laughs> Blinsky, perhaps if you show off some of your skills and perhaps make him uh, different masks he can use to express different emotions and different faces um, that might convince him that you uh, are an excellent toy maker and convince him that he may want to assist you with your work as well. Go ahead and roll um, Persuasion at Advantage, Roz. Hiddlewick looks anxious but doesn't seem to be scrambling away furiously. I'm going to pull out the mask that Anaha got for me from Blinsky 
uh, wind it up and show Piddlewick. Um, okay, can we at least put this on your face? Let's see how you like this. You put it on his face? If you'll let me. He is very cautious around you right now. Well, I can't give you the top hat. And I'm going to put on the top hat. It just looks too good on me. He pouts. Oh, really? Really? You want, you're going to take the top hat from me? He kind of like wiggles his shoulders. Might be a bit big on you, dear. Perhaps I <laughs> can make put it on a top hat sized for him. As one he, for you would be a bit too large for him. Exactly, we're standing it. As you put the top hat on him, it just slides completely past his head and like part way down his shoulders. <laughs> okay, okay. See, if you're gonna pull pranks on me, I get to do this to you. <laughs> But maybe we could get you your own top hat. And I kind of carefully extract him out of the hat. He looks pensively at Nanaha. I can put it on my head first to make sure nothing bad happens. He kind of goes floppy a little bit. I don't know what that means. He's... I, it's kind of a like giving up. I'm that not this saying this is my life. I'm not saying stay with him. I'm just saying we can get you a little hat. Accessorize. Perhaps Blinsky could be trying to improve him as well. If you let him be staying. Blinsky, I'm never going to leave somebody where they don't want to be. It is entirely up to Piddlewick. I wonder if you could make a friend for Piddlewick, another puppet like him. They could uh, mm. perform it shows would, and do other sorts be, of shenanigans. It would be greatest accomplishment. Blinsky would be liking this very much, but... I cannot... I, I will not kick if you not give. Would Piddlewick be okay with joint custody then? Sometime with Nanaha and sometime with Blinsky. It would be agreeable. Perhaps Blinsky could be having on weekends. Again, entirely up to Piddlewick. I will never send someone where they don't want to be, except Strahd to hell, but that's different. Yes, and Bl and Piddlewick has a notepad he can answer. He can ask questions himself. Thoughts, Piddlewick? He rummages out Verity's note old notebook, and he kind of scribbles a doodle of... A doodle of Nanaha and like kind of just shows it to her. Okay, you want to stay He's, with me? He seems to be implying that it's your choice. I don't want you to be where you're not going to be happy. That is just something I cannot do. So that is why I'm asking you, hun. Even if he throws rocks through windows and makes me miserable? I have asked him not to make you miserable, or at least I have pointed out that it would make me very sad if anything ever happened to you. Because you are my friend, just like he is. He just kind of shrugs. How about this? We need to tinker with some water. Do you mind hanging out with Blinsky for a little bit? Or, worst case, Blinsky can interact with you and I'll hang out in the room and the other two can go and assist with Saya. Thoughts? Well, this will be taking quite a long time. There is a lot to learn. 
I'm just well, saying, I can supervise visits if need be. And if you think we're going to leave you alone with a, a random stranger, uh, you obviously don't know us very well. <laughs> since I'm in the, uh, since I'm, uh, you know, out here making a ton of deals anyway, um, I'll pull out what remains of my destroyed whip, which is likely just the, the, the handle. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll hand it to Piddlewick. Uh, so this is actually really important to me. Uh, it was given to me by a friend. I will, I promise you, provided we can also make a truce, that I will come back for you after we're done at the lake. We won't, you, you won't have to stay here. Roll persuasion, pocket. He makes grabby hands for the little whip handle. I'll give it to him. He clings onto it and hops off Nanaha's Truce. neck. Truce, you hear me? Is there anything I can be given you in return? I do not have much money. His business has not been very... Um, very good since festivals have stopped. I don't think you have anything that can allow us to breathe underwater, do you? No. Most I uh, have is, uh, is monkey piccolo. No, that not needed. Um, just do uh, me a favor. Uh, well, Roz, you were saying something. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but he had information that we were trying to get about the puppets uh, of Irina the last time we were here that he didn't answer? Or am I, I thought he did answer it. He did answer. Okay. Continue. Just do me a favor. Don't do anything that harms Piddlewick. You can observe him, but I do want my friend back. Bolinsky has one more question for uh, friends before they leave. Okay. Sure. What importance is Tiefling friend of yours? She is a friend. Why, is there something going on? It, previous client has been asking for doll of here. Did not know what uh, what's, what this story was with it one. Well, she is kind of pretty, but why not a doll of me? I'm pretty handsome. That is All good right. point. So when so you come Nana, back, uh, I when think you come we back, stuff pocket when he dies. When when you come back, Blinsky will be making greatest kid toy for you. Yes. <laughs> yes, that'd be awesome. All right. Well, Blinsky has not been making the all, but a description client he's been giving Blinsky is very similar to Tiefling friend of yours. Um, are we allowed to ask who has a fancying eye for our verity? Previous client that was asked about before. If it's alright with you, I'm going to let Verity know that she has an admirer. Yes. Blinsky is not going to be saying name as one customer uh, businessman should be professional. Secondly, uh, Blinsky do not, does not have uh, bronze, bronze available for breaking. Understandable. Do take care of our little uh, friend. Uh, if he's serious about that truce, and I'm going to look at Piddlewick. If he's serious about that truce, if you hurt him, we may have to hurt you. Piddlewick like, makes a little boastful wiggle. No, 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 Pocket. If you're going to, th to threaten someone with violence... You have to back it up as well. 
So I just want like to how? know. It, you, you're saying that if he if he does something to Piddlewick against his will, you will kill him. What? No, That's what you just I'm said. not going to kill I him. He did hurt. Just hurt not him. Kill. We can't. Hurt, why would you do hurt? That? Everyone recovers from hurt. That's no big deal. It's hurt is worse than deal. kill. Kill it's a big hurt, and then it's over. Um, mm. Also, Piddlewick, don't hurt this guy. Yeah, true all around. How about that? As you go to look at Piddlewick to say that, you notice he's been nodding along to what Roz has been saying. Stop! No! Hey, stop! Nana has squats down, put hands on both shoulders. I need you both intact when I come back. Please don't hurt each other. He's just trying to find out more about you, and maybe he can make you a friend. Or at least a little top hat so you and Pocket can match. I mean, you won't be as handsome as me, but, you know. He shakes his head no. No, you won't hurt him, or... No, I think he means he's going to be far cuter than Pocket is with his top hat. If nothing else, it's a good he method nods. to mock Pocket, because then you can pantomime him even better. How about that? He nods enthusiastically after Roz says uh, that he's cuter than Pocket. <laughs> All right, you behave, you two. We'll be back for you after the water, okay? All right, as you leave the toy maker shop, make your way down towards the lake. This would be a good point for us to call it for the day. Excuse me? <laughs> yes. I am not okay with what just transpired in that scene. <laughs> You're totally okay with it. Oh, do tell. Guess you'll get to react to it next week. Hey, and at least it's only a doll. It's not like he ordered a Verity body pillow or something. Oh, yeah, no, because <laughs> all the dolls and puppets we've had so far have been fucking harmless and not terrible at all. I mean, the hey, Irina doll was just yeah. a doll. <laughs> yeah. We're making sure we let you know about it. It's yeah, just no, I don't, at the I don't moment. Trust this. I love Fluffy, you know, very much, but I, I don't. I, I can almost hear the wheels turning in her head from here. You, yes, yeah, she's, she's plotting and planning. I'm terrified. All it means is that we take over the town and kill all of the current Burgermaster's employees. We have to make sure we kill that guy too. We come back and there's <laughs> there's just a fire and a doll sitting at the gate. <laughs> yep. Look, I think you guys should trust Fluffy. I'm going to dive into that lake that's been spewing monsters upon. <laughs> True. I mean, I mean, technically, Saya has the worst of it coming up. <laughs> <sighs> well, um, happy New Year, everybody! This was a lot of fun, and I'm going to hand the reins back to Nevi. <laughs>